trains. I like Brooklyn when it rains, but I love Betsy. Oh, thanks, Rob. I like okay, Brooklyn. everybody. Hi, it's Betsy Wolf here in my Broadway Evolved home headquarters. We've added a very important addition: disinfecting wipes. I hope you guys are disinfecting everything as well as washing your hands repeatedly. Welcome, welcome to my living room. Okay, seriously, I am so excited. We have a genius that is going to be joining us and I actually, I really don't use that word lightly, but um, this next, uh, our guest today is a absolute genius. And why don't I try and invite him in and I'll talk awkwardly about him while he's in there, because that's always fun. Right? That's always like really, really fun when you're talking about someone while they're currently just having to listen to you. Um, so I'm trying to find my friend. Are you there? <laughs> Wait, oh, you guys, you can't try and join in right now. He's got to join in. Um, maybe he can request to join in. Go live with, why is this so complicated? Um, this is a Broadway Evolved homeschool edition, as well as you guys know, and welcome all the educators, as well as all of you students whose lives have been semi-canceled as well. Um, just for the time being, go live with. I'm looking for you, Rob. Oh wait, wait, did I see you? Did I see you? Sorry, you guys, this is quite complicated. But there's so many people joining us, this is awesome. Okay, I'm waiting for my dear friend. Um, I, first of all, Rob McClure has come to, oh, he's here, he's here. Rob, try and join in. Do you know how to work this better than I do? It says, Rob's here, so go live with, ah, there you are. Ha <laughs> ha I found you. <laughs> He's coming, he's coming. Rob McClure is unable to join. <laughs> We're gonna figure this out. Wait, Rob, try again. Come on, try again. It says that you're unable to join, which I know is not true. I know that's just not true because you're here. I see you here. Um, that's really odd. Why is that not working? I'm so sorry, you guys. Who knew technology would be so complicated? It shows that he's here. I know, I know, you're all waiting for it. So Rob came and did uh, the BE faculty in 2000 and last year, oh my gosh, just last year. And go live with, Rob, I'm really, really trying. I'm so sorry. And not only is Rob a brilliant brilliant actor, but he's an incredible teacher. Everything I've ever seen him do is sensational. Um, and I am just not seeing this. This is really, Rob, it says that you're unable to join, but I know that that's not true. So I'm Rob McClure, view there. Now he's requesting. Okay. Yes, thank you. Type in Rob's handle. I was trying to do that, waiting for Rob McClure. <laughs> we did it. It says connecting. We did it. Oh my it. gosh, I am sorry. I am the worst. Do not be sorry. I am I am the worst, but I was, as you were having to like awkwardly hear about me talking about you, is that always kind of like really special? But now that you're here, I am gonna tell you, you are like, it's weird being like a fan of one of your friends too, but everything I've ever seen you in, it's it's the most incredible performance. You are you are literally a genius. You're an amazing human. Um, everything from taking down Amtrak to the way you live your life, <laughs> like I, I'm I'm just I'm kind of obsessed. Um, you know, you you sang you you sang about me in a in a show once, and True. I really do believe that you were singing about me. True story. Um, you, true story. I know, I know. It's tough. It must have been so hard for like <laughs> the other actors and actresses to be like, God, this stinks. He's always talking about Betsy Wolf. Um, <laughs> welcome. Where I just want to first off start and say like. 
how are you doing? Where are you? Where are you quarantining? And how are you doing like today? How is today? I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. I'm, I'm at home in Philadelphia with my wife and my 15 month old daughter. So there are toys everywhere. Um, and a, and a shrimp pillow that Alex Timbers got us for opening for Beetlejuice. Um, and I got just, <laughs> I, I got dressed just enough to participate. I kept on my Ninja Turtle PJs. Oh my gosh, I am totally business on the top, party on the bottom. See, There's that's what I'm saying. On, like, pants happening. To, there's no real pants, but boy, oh, I'm rocking earrings. Only as much as you have to. Only as much <laughs> as you have to. Um, but uh, I'm in I'm in Philly, and uh, I miss I miss my my uh, my other families. You know, I miss the Mrs. Doubtfire family. I miss the Beetlejuice family. I miss. My friends, you know, it was so weird. The other day I was just walking past my friend's house in Philly and we, we texted them and said, we're outside your house. And they like came to their stoop. And from like 12 feet away, we were like, hi, it's just hi. a weird time, you know? It is a really, really weird time. And, you know, mostly people on this account are educators and students who all had their shows and everything canceled. And it's monumental. I mean, you were literally... In you'd done your out of town of Mrs. Doubtfire. You were here yep. rehearsing. What, what what on earth was that like? What how did yeah? It, we, it was uh, so we had done three previews, and on Thursday we did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three previews in a row, and then Thursday we were rehearsing in the theater to do our fourth preview on Thursday night. And uh, our producer Kevin McCollum just walked into the theater. Uh, they stopped rehearsal. And they made an announcement, and everyone just left. So literally, like. Yeah. All of my, all of my costumes, all of our costumes, all of our, our wigs, all of our, the set is just sitting there, in the ghost light, yeah. wait, waiting for us to come back. You know, it's a. The uh, world stopped for sure that weekend. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, you know, we're, we're lucky though. Our producers are dedicated to bringing us back when all of this passes, and that's not the case for everyone. And my heart bleeds no. for the people whose shows are just going away. So. I'm grateful to have something to look forward to um, and finally get to tell the story we want to tell. But we also recognize that there's a larger problem right now and we all have to be part of the solution and, yes. uh, and just stay still and try and embrace the stillness. Absolutely. What, um, how do you think your perspective will change a little bit when you come back? I mean, I don't know if I'll ever take for granted doing like a five show weekend again. It's so funny the things you used to think like, oh gosh, five, that's so hard this weekend, you know? Yeah. It's like, I, I would give anything to kind of like, you know, just start doing it. It's, it's interesting, but what's what's one shift in perspective that you'll, you think you'll have? I, I think that the, the recognition that what we do for a living is we, we create joy from, from nothing, from fiction. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and we're all sort of like having to muster our own joy in this time. We're having to like find ways in your house to muster joy. And, uh, and we, we are joy makers for a living and, and, mm -hmm. and we hold up, we hold up mirrors to audiences and make them feel. And right now we're responsible for all of our own feels. Um, so I can't wait to to provide that for people again. And I can't wait to have that interaction again. I can't wait to sit in my big comfy chair as, a, as Euphigenia Doubtfire and look square <laughs> into the audience and tell them they're going to be all right at the end of our show. Um, I, I am so excited. I'm, I'm, I, I agree with what you're saying. We are also in the business of being in groups of people, you know, and like yep. celebrating something Social that animals. really can happen collectively. So that's really hard. I'm, I am so excited. I did not get a chance to see one of the first three previews, but I have it on very amazing authority. I, I had someone that saw the reading, like literally one of your first reads, and they were just like, just wait till you see it, this man. Oh. I was like, oh, I know. I was like, no, no, no. I know. <laughs> I was like, you don't need it's, to tell me. Anyhow, I okay, it. so I did. <laughs> I know it sounds so silly, but I was like, don't tell me how good he is. I know. Um, 
I got some questions. We actually asked some people for some questions ahead of time. Great. Um, and I thought I got some really, 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 really interesting ones that I actually, I actually really want your perspective on. Sure. Um, but I think this one, I think this one is an amazing one because I, I get this question a lot and I have a feeling you will answer this in an in interesting way. Um, how do you avoid comparison to other actors slash performers? <laughs> Here's my thing. I don't. I do compare myself and 99% of the time, I think they're better than me, which makes me better. I think understanding that people are better than you at this makes you study. It makes you work. It makes you hungry. It makes you able to enjoy it. When I go see Ain't Too Proud, I mm -hmm. sit in the audience and go, these people are wildly gifted in ways that I will never be. Wow. <laughs> right? It, it maintains the wow factor. If I'm constantly trying to be better than everyone, my wow factor goes down because I think I got this. I don't. And the more awe I maintain for others, the more uh, you can you muster in yourself uh, the drive. And it's not about being better than them. It's about being good. You want to be good. And the knowledge that there are those who have mastered things that you're not even close to. It's how I, while we're in mutual admiration society, it's how I feel when I listen to you sing. I go, how? How does she do it? Where is she putting that? I don't have access to that place. Where is she putting that? And I sit there and I work on weird uh, reaches of my mix that I've never explored. Or we, weird, you know, it, it's about um, allowing yourself to, be com to compare yourself to others. But that not having an effect on your self-worth. There's a difference. I knew I would be obsessed with the way that you were going to answer that because I have always felt like so many students, it's like the most negative thing, right? When you watch someone else that, that does something really well, you're like, I don't do that. And right. the most successful actors and the people that I find to be brilliant are those that I truly believe can take that inspiration from others and go, I want more of that in what I do and use yes. it and use it to their advantage. I hope you guys are hearing that out there. Um, that is a huge difference, be, being able to cultivate that that um, curiosity within yourself too. I love I love that. I love how you answered that. I do that on, um, I, I do that on YouTube daily. I go down YouTube spirals of people I'm in awe of. Oh, I totally do. <laughs> well, now is a great time for YouTube spirals. I will, I will tell you that. Okay, so we have a lot of students too who um, who are debating whether or not to even go to college, right? Like right now, it's you can supplement, you know, different things, or maybe the people decided like maybe I, I want to do legit acting and then take voice lessons. Um, what do you? What, what are kind of your thoughts on that? I know we have different college experiences. You were you were at Montclair for a while. What do you? How do you feel about like college versus just moving here? What do you think? What would you say to someone? I think it, it's about what kind of atmosphere you thrive in and what and and it's about getting better, right? It's not about the piece of paper. It's not about the degree. Because when you go into the audition room, they don't care about the degree. They care, they care no about what cares. you're doing. Um, so it's about what made you better. And for me, I went to Montclair State University, a state school in New Jersey, because it's all I could afford. And... Um, and that program made me better. Um, and it was because of the education I was getting. It was because of comparing myself to other people. You want to feel like a small fish. Feeling like a small fish is important. And going to a program where you become a small fish is important. So figuring out what the atmosphere is that makes you feel like a small fish because you're going you're gonna to chase the big fish and you're going to get better. So whether that's at a state school, whether that's at a conservatory, whether that's at a fancy pants place, um, whether that's 
moving to New York and just showing up to audition, um, it will all make you better. And uh, everyone's got a different a different journey to success. And uh, my, I, I left school before I graduated because I was auditioning. Um, and uh, so that, that for me uh, was my path, but everyone's got to take their own. And, but it's genuinely about finding a space that makes you a better performer because that's the only thing that matters on the other side of it. I think that's so important. It's one of the thing. it's one of the reasons why for me, like creating Broadway Evolved was not about just like technical training, how to get to Broadway, because so much of it for me is like, how do you survive? What makes you happy? How do you act as a person? And one of the things that I think is so important is really evaluating what kind of environment do I actually thrive in? I, I know that at my school, there's maybe a fifth of us that are still performing in my graduating class. And that has nothing yeah. to do with the fact that they were not insanely talented. Nothing. But I, I'm sure some of them would tell you, like, that wasn't the right environment for me. And it That's set right. me in a place where I knew that then I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. So, you know, I, I love that. It's not always about One thing, the thing that I would stay away from is um, I'm finding a lot of programs and some of the big fancy ones are teaching how to get the job and not how to do the job. And they're also- oh, Can you explain the difference? Please yes. explain the difference. They're this is huge. And, Listen. And they're, they're teaching you that the validating part of what we do is the acquisition of the job. Ooh. And, and, and <laughs> you have situations where you get the job and then you see all of these 22 year old kids who are in a big fancy Broadway show, Broadway tour, regional show. And two weeks into the run, they're bored. <laughs> and the work suffers and the product suffers because the joy is only brought to them in the getting of the gig, not in the doing of the gig. And if you be if you become great at the thing you're doing, you can't wait to do it. And that is whether or not you're in an audition room, out of work, whether or not you're uh, in a vocal studio or Ripley Greer Studios in New York taking a voice lesson, where whether you're, if the doing is the part that fires you up, then when you get the job, you'll do it well because if you bring gratitude to it, if you're constantly looking forward to the next thing, you can never really be great at the thing you're currently doing. Um, so the, these, these programs that focus on, this is what you wear, this is what you, th this is how you say hello to them when you walk in the room, this is how you prepare your binder. This, yeah, but what do I do when I'm doing it? When I'm acting, when I'm singing, when I'm performing, when I'm dancing, what do I do then? Because if I'm great at that, if that's what I do, then nothing else matters because I'll walk into the room, I'll behave the way that I behave, but when I start to do the thing I do, people respond. Do I love it. That is something that you, is so palpable when we watch you perform on a nightly basis. And it is transparent when that is not happening on stage and we all see it. Um, yeah. And I think what's so hard is I think that students too, when they're, you know, when you're in high school, you're looking for that affirmation, right? Yeah. And you're looking for the teacher to tell you did a great job. And it's all yeah. about like, you know, oh. sometimes it's about your parents, right? So oh. this is what you should be doing. And I have found that if you really, really take a hard look at yourself at this critical age that you guys are at and really decide like, do I actually love doing it? I think one of the, one of the most special emails that we got was from a 16 year old who realized it was her, she'd gone through a week of the program and it was like her parents that loved her watching her perform and she, the casting director came to our session and started talking about her journey and how she went into casting. And all of a sudden she was like, I think I, I, I don't really love performing, but I love watching people who love doing it. And I wow. think that's where I want to shift. To be able to realize that too, at such a young age, is it, it's such a, it is such a gift. So really, yeah. you, I can tell you know yourself so well, you seek out like, 
what's inside because that ultimately does make you like such well, an incredible performer too. And the gratitude from an audience is a wonderful thing, but if that's, if again, that's providing the joy and not the doing, but the <laughs> receiving, you're doing it for the, for the wrong reason. You're going to get in trouble who, someday. You really people, will. <laughs> people who say, you know, what got you into the business? Well, I did my sixth grade talent show and the first time I felt the spotlight, <laughs> if that's what's happening, <laughs> quit. Oh. It's not about the receiving, it's about the doing. And then the, the, the mutual gratitude between you and an audience is a thrilling thing. But the, you know, it, when you talked about the affirmation, you know, it, when you're in, a, in an atmosphere of study, when you're in Broadway of all taking class, if you sign up so that you can go into a room with people you think are fancy and show them how good you already are, so that they'll tell you how good you already are, don't come. We're not interested in teaching you because you're not interested in learning. If it's about exposure, I'm gonna to go to this class to show that person how good I already am. You're not actually taking class. You're, you're schmoozing. I always, I always say get comfortable with the idea that you are going to never fully feel like you know what you're doing. And if you don't crave that kind of sensation, you are in the wrong business. Everyone always wants to know, well, how do I get over being nervous? How do, when do I know I figured it out? And I'm like, this, you don't. No. And if you need that, go do something else. <laughs> if you're, when you're nervous, it's your body letting you know that you're doing something extraordinary. Yes. If you're, if you're not nervous. It's crazy. If you're not nervous, you're, you're not acknowledging how insane and extraordinary the situation you put yourself in is. Nervous just means you care. It's a good thing. Do you have a really good nervous story? I just thought of one that I had when I was doing Waitress, like like a true like panic moment on stage. And I finally got, I just like was like, get over yourself, Betsy. I was yeah. like, you're being so selfish right now. You know this song. And I like yeah. spent like 30 minutes waiting for She Used To Be Mine one night. I think I'd done it for three weeks. You know this, you know the song. And I like in my head then for about 30 minutes was convinced that I was gonna go out there and not know it. Yeah. And that has not, that did not happen after that. But it was like the most infuriating thing. And I yeah. realized, oh no, I'm still very much human, but I have to get out of my own way. Too, yeah, because I, I call was it, creating a situation. That's it. I call it who's talking. And for me, it goes in three month cycles. Yes. I'll be in the middle of the show. And me goes, you don't know the next line. Ugh. And I go, yes, I do. See, it just came out of my mouth. No, not that one. The next one. You should run the lines coming up while you're doing these lines to make sure you know them. And when you do that, you go up. Yes, and all the, because you are not there. You are That's not right. where we are supposed to be, and it's our, yeah. And, and the, <laughs> thing, the thing that gets me back on book. Yeah, what is, do you do? What's the one thing? Listening. Yes. Not thinking, because if you hear what the per other person says to you, the next thing you have to say makes total sense. It makes perfect sense. It's, if you're reaching into your own database, you're actually not in the scene. So, yeah. Uh, You're ahead. Myself, We're always telling, ahead. People are ahead myself. looking for the high note. People are getting ahead thinking like what's going to come instead of just being there. And Trusting that is that a vulnerable there. feeling. And yeah. and so if you don't, if you are truly not comfortable with going, I might actually mess up, but I, but I will be in the moment. Like I truly will. I will still be there. It will come to me because I've done the work. Mm -hmm. So just go. Just go, be there, listen, respond. It'll come because I'm prepared. What I wasn't prepared for when I did the work was self-sabotage. If that, yeah. it, 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 that's not something I've prepared for. And for no. me, it happens like every three months. I have, a little, I have a little bout of who's talking and I need to, I need to silence that voice and just listen. Yeah, um, I'm so curious, I have like, this is totally a selfish, a selfish question for me. Is there a role or or a time in your life or, or some, some, no, a role, how's that, that 
would be really fun to tackle again for you. Do you ever I, have those things? I did Leo Frank in Parade in college. Um, and I would really love to get one more go at that, just to get to sing that score again. Um, That's so funny. Mine's from college, too. Amalia, and she loves me. Yeah. yeah. Or love to do it again. Yeah. Um, I would. Oh, I would love to see your Leo Frank. Oh, uh, it was fun. He's he's. Uh, I I like him because he's complicated. Yeah. And what I did like you feel him. like you didn't uh, tackle? I'm so curious to know um, what you think you didn't, or, or what I, you'd want to do again. I was scared. I was scared of singing it, and <laughs> and more than anything, I I just want to do it again so that I can enjoy the work and have have a run where I don't spend most of it afraid. Um, because, <sighs> because I do I do a lot of, you know, I did that with Honeymoon in Vegas on, on Broadway. I, I look back on that and I, and I was so worried about the run of the show. Oh my God, is it going to run? Are we going to sell tickets? Oh my <laughs> God, are we going to close? We worked so hard on this. Oh my God, I, that I missed it. All mentally. these peripheral things. And which like, are things that are put upon us too, which are outside, which are things that you have to learn how to navigate and negotiate as well. But I love what you're saying. Like, I just want to live it. Yeah. If, if I can really? find immense amounts of joy in doing three performances of a show at my high school, I should be able to enjoy a five month run on Broadway. Why didn't I? Because I was in, I was scared. I was scared of it. I wanted it to keep going. Well, or you can just show up and acknowledge what you're doing every day, which is awesome. I love this so much. I really, really hope that all of the amazing high schoolers are, are hearing this and that it's not about getting to Broadway and it's not about the next show and uh, acquiring, as we were saying, that, that like what you are doing now, find yeah. the joy in. And, and the... You know, uh, for those of you whose shows were canceled, uh, I feel you. And if, uh, you know, w what we were saying, that audience is a wonderful thing. But if you really need the doing, you have the memories of rehearsal. You have the memories of tech. You have the memories of learning that music with your friends. You have the memories of listening to the cast album in the basement with your friends. If you love the doing, you had a valid, don't throw, you know, throw the whole experience out. You had a, it's not you, about just you, you can show whether or not people got or not. I, yeah. uh, I could talk to you all day. We could just sit here and sanitize all day. <laughs> what are you eating for lunch today? I'll probably make my daughter some like mac and cheese with something in it and just eat some of it while I'm feeding it to her. She says thank you now, which is the best. Thank you. Everything, every spoonful. Thank, thank you. you. That's the sweetest thing. Thank you. Like, <laughs> well, I, I'm happy that that's the word, that those are the things she's saying. I've heard from some of my friends who have slightly older children and thank you is maybe not the first word coming out of their mouths right now. <laughs> okay, I think you froze. Um, I adore you. I really, really am uh, so grateful for you as a friend, as well as a performer in this business. Um, you're an incredible human. I hope to see you this summer. And I know that the world already adores and loves you and is just going to fall in love with you in this new, new capacity. It's just one more. And I know that you're going to enjoy it and love it. Thank you, Rob. Did I lose you? Goodbye. We love you. We love you here at Broadway Evolved. All right, I'll let Rob. Handsome too. Okay, Rob McClure left. And uh, oh my gosh, I could talk to him all day. I know you guys could listen to him all day. He's a genius and he's so smart and has such a great outlook. Um, really quickly, I'm going to say this before we wrap up. I have been told there are less less than I think 12 spots for um, uh, Christy Altamar and I in conversation. That was nuts. They, they, they went very, very fast. So if you would like to be there Monday 
um, with Christy and I, we're going to talk for an hour and we're going to do a real in-depth conversation. If you liked what you saw today, um, we're going to do it. I'm going to do it with Christy all tomorrow. It's going to be really awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for coming and watching. Okay. Bye.